In this video, we will take a look at the CAD simulations of uh, solar uh, flat plate collectors. So in this case, we have uh, a simple setup of uh, flat plate collectors. We have just a single pipes, a single copper pipes um, that has a water flowing inside. We got um, absorber plate uh, uh, underneath your copper pipe here. So underneath this absorber plate, uh, we got the insulators. It is made out of polyurethane, um, polyurethane um, materials. So the casing is a plywood and uh, the solar collectors is covered by a glass, a glass cover. So the entire, uh, the length of the of this setups, you know, this uh, solar flare plate collectors is 1.5 meters. <clears throat> So, um, so this setup is being used in experiments. So idea here is we will uh, set up exactly uh, the same model in your CFD and see whether uh, your CFD model is able to replicate the experimental results. So we got all the information here, the parameters, the physical characteristics for, uh, for, your, um, for your air, for your waters, for your aluminum plates, which is your absorber plates at the copper pipes, um, as well as the polyurethane. So these are the key, the key components. The key co component here will be uh, your your copper pipes, obviously. So this is where the water is flowing. Um, we got the absorber plates. So this is uh, the component that will be absorbing heat from the suns. Um, you'll be responsible for uh, transferring the heat uh, to the water in, co co in, your, in your copper pipes. So underneath this copper pipe, we have the insulate, insulation blocks. So this uh, essentially is repel heat. So you got very low specific heat capacity and also very low uh, thermal conductivities. So we have also some information on the transmissivity and uh, emissivities that we can use uh, to set for, for uh, to set up your, your CAD simulations. <clears throat> so uh, the idea here actually is to um, to uh, to set up the, the entire model that will include uh, the copper pipes, the plates, the air and insulators. Okay. So first we need to create a model and we, um, we can use SOLIDWORKS to create a model and after that uh, we can um, uh, transfer your SOLIDWORKS models uh, to be used as a model in your, um, in your CFD simulations. <clears throat> so first we will create your copper pipes, then we will create the, uh, the absorber plates underneath it. Um, we will create also the your ins insulation layers. Uh, we will create also uh, your airspace. So if we assume your glass here uh, to be fully transparent, uh, to be to have no uh, resistance. So basically, we will we can uh, we can uh, neglect the the effect of the glass, and also um, we will also neglect the the effect of the uh, the plywood, okay. So in your solid work here, we got multiple plan. Um, so we can use our right plan so we can uh, try to adjust so that uh, we have the, the x variable x um, so at the right plan here you can uh, 
sketch and sketch your your pipes your pipes gonna be only uh, the diameter is, is going to be only half of the inch so this means that the radius is going to be only Zero point six three five um, centimeter. So always check that you have. Um, so this is this is in millimeters, which means that um, in millimeters your pipes gonna be so the length. Length of the pipes is gonna be one point five meters, so it's gonna be thousand five hundred, right? Now we um, we can uh, proceed to create our absorber plates. So this is. The aluminum plates underneath <coughs> underneath your your copper pipes. So the length of your pipe is going to be 150 millimeters, which means that this is going to be 75. And you got also 75 from here. <coughs> and the pipes is only one millimeter. Now you can complete your azoba plates. So this is your azoba plate. <clears throat> so notice here there's uh, a very um, you got a very small airspace actually uh, between your your pipes. This is a very sharp edges that you have uh, between your copper pipe and your azoba plates so this actually can cause some issues in your meshing layers so prevent that kind of things uh, you you should consider create some solid here um, so that uh, to, to actually uh, close out all these sharp edges right so What you can do is you can create a point along here. So this could be minus two. And create another point here. This is two. All right.
and use your center point um, arc here. Connect between these two points. Right. So we're going to close up this. So now we we create So now we can able to extrude actually this space so that we can avoid sub edges that is being formed between your your plates and your um, your copper pipes okay So extrude this one, um, this surface, this surface, also don't merge it, don't merge it with your copper pipes, right? So now we have uh, your copper pipes um, and your isopor plates, and we can now proceed to create um, your your insulation block. So go to your right plane and sketch again. So your insulation block gonna have thickness of 30 millimeters so you can just proceed to create a block with 30 millimeters do not merge okay <clears throat> Finally, we will create your airspace, okay, between your glass and your absorber plates, as well as your copper pipes, and we will neglect actually the effect of plywood and also um, the, the glass cover. So your airspace, this one is going to be 30 millimeter as well, uh, 150. Finally, we will need um, to use a center arc point to connect uh, these two points together. So always should double check that it actually connect all the point.
right? Now we can extrude it and also do not merge. Select this contour. So now we also have the airspace. So basically, we now we have. Um, you can basically rename this one to avoid confusions. This is your copper pipes. This is your as over plates or simply just pipes. This is your insulators. This is your air. So we've got four blocks and we are ready to, uh, to simulate. <coughs> so we will export these files as um, IGS files. Okay, into our SASCCM and, and there we will set up our, our we'll take a look on how to set up your CAD simulations. So here we have the uh, interface of SASCCM. So this is a CAD simulation software. We will create a new and import the surface mesh that, that we just created. So in this case, we have surface mesh that is in parasolid form. So we got inside here, we got four bodies. So you can rename this body as your air. Like this. This is, of course, your pipes. So, um, we basically ignore the thickness of copper pipes. What we're simulating here is, in fact, your uh, your waters. Okay. So, in fact, we have this is a solid. This is actually fluids for air. Um, this is your, uh, this is a solid as well in insulators, and this is a fluid for waters. So basically, we have a four different material, which means that we will create a physics for four, for all four different materials. So before we, before we actually go to create this, uh, uh, the physical model for your four different materials, we, we need to create uh, new regions. So this is regions for Azorba will be, will be a solid. So you can rename this one as you know, Azoba. So this is a region for the Azoba. Create another new regions for your air will be a fluid.
insulators will be solid. Select this and create a new regions uh, finally for your waters in your pipes. So that is also a fluid. Okay. Now we will prescribe a physical model for all the or four different solids because they all are actually uh, consist of different materials, which means that we will prescribe different model, uh, different model to calculate uh, your different regions. Right. So. Okay, so we can uh, create for physics, this is the model for the model for uh, each each different uh, the model for this is actually the mathematical model for the, for your different uh, different materials okay inside your sol solar collectors so this is your pipe right And um, and the next thing that we have to do is, in fact, is uh, defining the boundaries. So this is defining the bounding boundaries. These are the bounding conditions for each of your um, efficient materials. So um, in order to define the boundaries, we need to have the name for for each of your for each of the boundaries. For example, here, you're looking at your S over here, or you're looking at your, your A here, you got on many faces, so these are all your boundaries, okay, at the top, at, at, so this surface, this surface, your pipes, as well as the sides, they are all boundaries. And you're able to provide name for each of these boundaries. How are you going to do that? You can split by patch. Okay. And name the top as top. So these are your bottom, which interface with the water. Okay. So this boundary is actually is interface with the boundaries for your water pipes okay so you can name it as pipes bottom pipes now now this actually This uh, bottom as well, this interface with your Azoba plates. So you can call this one a bottom Azoba. Um, these are all your, these are the side. So the remaining are actually your front and back. And you can just rename here. Okay. front and back so by splitting um, the, the, your faces so you can provide name for each of your boundaries 
So, um, so at a boundary here, okay, you can, for example, we go to your air. So we just done air. Okay, you can actually um, prescribe the the boundary conditions for each of the surface. Uh, each of the bound, boundary that you created, okay, the, the conditions for each of the boundary you cre created. For example, um, you can prescribe a wall, okay, because um, this this actually, this beside here, you can say there are wall, okay, so your front and side going to be wall. In reality, it's a plywood. Okay, here is a wall, you can say it's a wall. Now we're going to create new boundaries for the top. Okay, so this is a wall as well, okay, right here. It is possible we can use um, a symmetric plane as well for, for your top. Um, we can now your bottom. Is over. So this interface with the the the, uh, the plates, your Azoba plates. And finally, um, the bottom part. This interface with the pipe. Okay, basically we need to uh, do the same again for your uh, for your other other parts. Okay, so we done the air already. We need to do the same for your azober. So if you look at your azober here, it got at the top there interface with air. At the bottom here is interface with the, with the insulators. So if you split by patch, so these are actually the top part. Okay, and you can call this one its top. Um, it's, it is its top surface and its interface with uh, the air. This is its bottom. So it's interface with the insul insulators. This is actually its top by its interface with the pipe. Okay, this is your isopa plate. And finally, these are your side. So these are your side. And the remaining are the front and back. So you can go to the S over here, okay, and uh, so this is your you now you having created naming the boundaries for S over you can proceed to define the conditions for each of the boundaries, right? So you can um, for your site. Um, front and back they are actually you can consider them to be a wall okay you need to create 
boundaries, boundary conditions for your uh, top with the pipes. Right. So this is actually an interface. Um, we will create, you know, for, for now we will leave it just as a, as a wall now. But after that, we, in fact, we will um, create, we will create an interface conditions, all right, between um, these top pipes and also the, uh, the boundaries of your water pipe, right? So, we need to do the, to, to do the same for, the, for your bottom insulators, right? So you can name this one as the insulators. And finally, for your, um, for your top air, Right. Now for your insulators. Okay, we need to name all the boundaries as well. Um, here we split it. This is its top. This is its bottom. This is a site. And the remaining are your front and back. Okay. Now do the same for the pipe as well, right? So the pipe gonna have split by page. The pipe gonna have an inlet. So this is actually its wall. This is its inlet. So the remaining is actually its outlet. Okay, the remaining is its outlet. So now we name we having we name all the boundaries for all your components, right? And and uh, we need to create also, you know, here the boundary conditions uh, for each of the boundary that you just created. For your insulators, you're gonna need. Uh, you can do wall for your front and back. Can call this one actually to, you can, to be consistent. You can call this one site. Um, for your bottom, right? It's going to be a wall as well. For your at uh, the top. This is the top. Okay. Finally, for your pipes. So your pipe, you have water inlet and water outlet. Um, so you can do velocity inlet for your inlet. So this is going to be inlet. Outlet. So it could be pressure outlet, right? We name this one as outlet as well. Um, basically your wall. Okay, all right. This is this is the wall itself. Okay. 
So we created, we name all our boundaries, and we have also the boundary, the conditions, okay, for uh, for each of the components. So as you can see, some of the components they are, are actually, you know, the facings. Um, they are actually uh, stick together. Okay, for example. If you look at your Azoba plates, um, so TOV, TOV, TOV is interfaces, um, it's actually, um, it's connected to your air and part of it is connected to the waters. So in order to, to connect these two interfaces, what you can do is you need to click this top air, okay, for your Azoba plates and go to air here and click its both in absorbers, okay, these are the two, basically, this is the top interface for the absorber and it is connected to the uh, bottom boundaries of your airspace, okay, these two interfaces, they are connected and you can connect them together by right click and create an interface, okay, this, this will create an interface that will connect these two boundaries from different components together. Obviously, you have other components as well for your uh, boarding insulators. So this is the interface between the absorber and uh, your, your uh, insulator. So you need to go to your insulators and click its top interface, and create interface. So this uh, will connect the bottom boundaries of your absorber with the, the top boundaries of your insulators. So for your absorber, the um, part of the plate is also connected to the water pipes and you need to connect it to the wall. So this is the wall of your water pipes. Right click and create interface. Okay. So for your air, um, the air itself, okay, is also sharing your boundaries with your water pipes, and this is the wall itself. You can, okay, click wall and bottom of your pipes together, and right click and create interface, okay. Right. So this will be all the interface that you need. Okay. So this is the first interface. Yes, is between the absorber and the air. Your second interface is between the absorber in the insulators. This interface is between the air and the pipes. And lastly, So this is actually the interface between um, your um, your pipe and the absorb and the uh, absorber plates, and lastly, this is you have the interface between the pipe and the air, right? So having all defined boundary conditions, actually, we need to we need to define, you know. Um, we, we're not done with the boundary conditions. In fact, we need to prescribe some values. For example, your velocity inlet, right? So you can go to the inlet here and provide the value. The value of your inlet. Okay, so... Um, So if you notice that we uh, we cannot prescribe here is because we actually we need um, we need we need we need to prescribe the appropriate physics continuums, okay, for each of your regions. So previously we defined here 
the fizzy continents, right? So this is, uh, before we can define your boundary conditions, we actually need to define your model here, all right? So for your what for your pipes, is going to be a water inside. So you can click on this and uh, click on liquid. This is water. This is three dimensional. So we're going to do a steady states. We will do uh, segregated flows. Um, it's polymer densities. Okay, it will be a laminar flows. So in this case, we have. Uh, we have the mass flow rate of 1.36 uh, gram per second. So this translates to a velocity of 0 0.011 meter per second. And, um, and using these velocities as well as uh, the size, the diameter of your pipes, we can calculate out the Reynolds, Reynolds numbers. So in this case, uh, the real number is only 140s, which means that it's going to be a laminar flow, right? It's going to be a laminar flows. So energy, we will do uh, segregated temperatures. And basically, we define, now we fully define our pipes. Insulator will be a solid, so three dimensionals. So it's a solid, steady state as well. And we will do a segregated solid energies and it will be a constant densities. For your air, uh, three dimensionals. So this is a gas. You can do segregated flaws, it's steady state. Uh, it's a lamina as well. And we will do polynomial density as well. Right. And you're going to have a gravity. For your air, we're going to um, basically we will need a radiations. There will be radiations going on. Right. So when the uh, solar energy coming in um, from the top, right. So there is a radiations actually uh, exchange between all these different surfaces. So we will do surface to surface radiations. We will do temperatures, we will do gray thermal radiations and do a solar load motor and include the solar load motor. So finally our absorber is a three dimensional Steady states is a solid. And we will do segregated energies and do uh, constant densities. Okay. So over here we can define actually you also place aluminiums. We can we can uh, define the value of its densities. So in this case uh, we have. Aluminium uh, density of uh, 2770. So you can modify this. Okay, a specific heat of 420 for aluminiums. 800, uh, 875 and thermal conductivity of 1. 177. So this is a 177. 875. Right. So the gravity actually will be along the y direction. So you need to ch actually change this one to, to uh, here. So for your air, um, for your air, we will have 
we have a specific heat of 1007. Thermal conductivity is 0 0.0263. Now our um, density, uh, if, as it varies with temperatures, is given here, okay? So what we can do is, we can create our polynomial, polynomial functions for your density. So here we have the coefficients for each of the uh, exponents. So this is the um, exponents for for zero power temperature zero power. So it's actually is is this very first single term. So it will be eight point one four seven minus zero point zero six. So it's going to be eight point zero. 788. So the first one here is going to be 8. Okay. Now we got um, So actually, the, this is uh, uh, is is uh, is eight point one four seven. So there is a missing t here. Okay, there is a missing t here. So in fact, it's one seven. And this is actually the coefficients for the temperatures. This is the coefficients for the temperature to power two. This is the coefficient for temperature to power three. This is the coefficient for temperature to power four, and so on. And uh, we can include these equations. In fact. Uh, by including its coefficients. So what we can do is we can include these different exponents. So this will be uh, exponent, this, this will be the temperature to a power 1, temperature to power 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right. Um, okay, we need to include 5, 6 coefficient first. So this means that we're going to have uh, uh, this will be the exponent. Uh, this will be temperature to power 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And, and here we can include our coefficients. Right, so it will be 0 0.0682. Then... Uh, 2.688 to power power negative 4 so this is minus uh, this is minus so minus 5.387 negative five point two nine nine to power power negative ten And minus two point zero two eight two
So we can see here how um, how the density here actually varies with this uh, with this a different coefficients a different exponent. Okay. Now for your air, we need to. Um, so in this solar load here, we actually um, here we can prescribe. We can do a menu specifications. So here we have the the azimuth and attitudes. So these are actually the directions of your solar, okay, and, um, incidence on your motors. So here is the solar flux, the value of the solar flux, right? And um, we have the direct solar flux and also the diffuse solar flux. So this is a direct solar radiation, since this is a diffuse solar radiations. And we can include the value here based on the information uh, from the articles. For example, if you wish to simulate this particular case exactly at noon here, uh, we have the, the, the solar, total solar radiations of 540. Okay, here 540. So this is the total solar radiations and uh, is the, the total of your direct and diffuse solar, solar heat flux will be 540. 40s. So at the start, we can do final 40 for a direct and no diffuse solar heat flux. And uh, to simulate your solar radi radiations, okay, incident um, a 90 degree onto your motor here, okay, we can do degree, okay, minus 90. So this will be 90 degree from your horizontal, okay, in, and incident directly onto your model. So for our insulators, um, is your polyurethane, your polyurethane will have a density of 75, specific of 1, and thermal conductivity of 0 0.039. Okay, so this is, you can rename it, this one is your polyurethane, right? So this actually have density of only 70, 70 Seventy-two, one, and zero point zero three nine. This is the pipe will be a water inside. So the waters would have a specific heat for waters four hundred. 4,230, so you can change here, would have uh, thermal conductivities of 0 0.569, and it would have a polynomial density as well, um, so its, its, its density actually varies with temperatures, and we have the formula here to describe. Right. So we're going to have one, two, three, four. We're going to have four coefficients. Um,
So this will have uh, 197105. Minus 7.143, about that. Minus 0 0.026. And lastly, So here you can see how the temperature will behave. According to the formulation here, how, the, uh, how your density is actually varies with the temperatures. So you should double check for your air as well to see it actually makes sense for your air with define your density for your air as well Minus five plus five and two. Okay, so you can see the density for most of the temperatures uh, between between three hundred and seven hundred is it would have the value of uh, about one kilogram per meter cubed. Only at very extreme temperatures, very low temperatures, or very high temperatures, the the value will be uh, will change significantly. Anyway, we include the polynomial equations to here, and um, basically we fully set up our model here. Our absorber fully set up our physical model for all your material. And the next steps is uh, is to define actually the. Your, your inlet, boundary condition for your inlet. So your pipes is gonna be actually, this is your pipes, so it will be waters. For insulator, it will be, the physical continuity will be insulators. For the air, it will be air, okay. Absorber will be absorber, okay. So each of, your, each of your region here, each of your, each of your component here, uh, okay, you need to prescribe the physical continuum, the correct physical continuum that we just set up uh, under your, your continuum, okay? So having done that, we can now go, you, go to your inlet and set up the velocities, right? So this will be the velocity. The velocity will have a value of a zero point zero one one. Right. Zero point zero one one. Outlet is a pressure outlet.
Now, finally, we need to um, prescribe the radiation characteristics, the transmittivity, trans transmissivities, as well as the emissivities, the reflectivities, those kind of things. Uh, for, for, for most of the component here, we will assume the air to have uh, full transmittivities uh, and the aluminum is going to be have a full emissivities. Your copper pipe is going to have a full emissivity as well. Okay, so So for your air here, uh, if you go to your uh, bottom air sober, so this is this is your bottom air sober here will be the um, basically your uh, your sober plates. So you're gonna have emissivity of one, right? So similarly for your for your pipe interface, so you're gonna have also emissivity of one. Now for your top surface, um, so your top surface is gonna be a wall in fact, right? So you, you're going to have a fixed temperatures uh, of 300 and um, you would have uh, a full transmittivity. So one here, right? Okay. Um, so your glass here is we will assume that um, here is the glass at the top here and it would have uh, full transmittivities it will allow your solar radiations okay coming from the top here so you're gonna have a full trans you're gonna have a value of transmittivity of equal to one for your wall, the wall of your air blocks, so this is um, this is your side wall as well as front and back. So these are actually your plywood. So we can keep actually for your plywood, we will keep the emissivity of 0 .0 0 0.8 here. Okay, and, and leave and would have uh, no transmittivities. So with this, we basically set up our model and, um, and we are almost ready to simulate. So you, you should double check here for your interface. And uh, this is the interface between your air and your pipe wall. It should be a conducting buffer thermal, okay. So this essentially allows the heat coming from your from your air going into um, into into the waters, right? So before we actually begin simulations, we need to set up our meshings. Right, so we set our meshings. So this uh, this will describe. Uh, this will actually discretize the governing equations. This allows your solver to calculate uh, your temperature within your domain. So to do that, we have to go to the operation here and click a new new mesh 
automatic mesh uh, for your adsorber. Okay. So um, so we can begin our meshings perhaps for the pipes. So this is the pipe here. We will do polyhedral. Uh, we will do this. Can we include all these things? So we will include boundary layers, four boundary layers with thickness um, five percent. And we will do a size of zero point zero one, right? So this is this is your pipe. So we will do meshing on your pipe first, and basically execute. So operating finish, we can go to mesh here and view your mesh. So this is the mesh of your pipes. Okay, so it looks reasonably good. Um, you can see here, this is the boundary layers. So this is coming from the prisms, right? So here we prescribe the prism layer to before you can count here. We have four boundary layers. This is to capture the, uh, the waters. The water actually close to the to the pipe wall. Um, now we can create machines for your adsorber. We we'll try with the trim cell. We will create. 0 0.01 so this is a very thin plate okay so we created in fact um, mesh for your azoba plates here right so these are azoba plates so we create only one cell for your azoba plates now we create uh, meshings for your um, for your insulators. We can do uh, tetrahedral. Um, with a size of uh, zero point zero one. Right. So this is maybe too small. This one we can do. Um, we can include here um, surface measures and see how it, how it will be happens. Okay, so this is the meshings for our um, insulators. Now we can do finally your airspace, and we will do Churchill Heater as well to include the uh, surface meshes. So this is your. Air. So we're gonna do a base size zero point zero one as well. Let's see how it looks like.
So as, as a start, you really don't want to have uh, too many mesh on your plates and also on your plate uh, in your domain. This is this is because you will calculate the the surface surface to surface radiations exchange. So the more mesh that you have, uh, um, the more intensive the cal calculation is going to be for the surface to surface radiations. So so uh, yeah so. We'll begin with somewhat coarse mesh. Okay, so we have our mesh. So this is the mesh for your air. Um, so because because of the mesh, because we have more elements inside the pipes, you can see that actually uh, this result in uh, more also meshing elements around um, inner regions uh, around the your pipe here, and there are coarser mesh actually away from the pipes. So with this, uh, we we complete the meshings for our model. We um, so basically we we are almost ready to simulate. We set out our physical model for all for our all four materials. We define the boundary conditions. Uh, we include the interface as well. We done the meshing as well. We done the meshing already, and lastly, we will need to look at how to how to simulate, right? So yeah, we are almost very ready to simulate, and um, so this is going to be a steady state simulations, and and what we want to see is how how actually the temperature will distribute within your domain and also the temperatures uh, of your water inlet and outlet. So here we got the solver for your gamma equations. Uh, we got a solver for the velocity and pressure of your air and waters. We got a solver for the energy, so this is solver that describes the, the your temperatures uh, within your domain, temperature in your air, in your waters, in your absorber plates as well as your insulators. Finally, we got a solver for your radiations, so this is the a solver to compute these the surface to surface radiations. So inside here we have some uh, we we got. Some setting that we can adjust. For example, here we got the number of beams. So this represents actually the number of beams um, per patch that is being used in beam, uh, beam tracking. So this patch represents actually the uh, um, the, uh, the the uh, the mesh on your boundaries. Okay, these are uh, representing the patch. Representing the mesh on your boundaries, so this represents the number of beam that is actually uh, emitted for each patch. So the default is one thousand two hundred forty, and that, so the more beams that you include, uh, actually the the more competition intensive is going to be. Okay. So this is the default. We can try with uh, um, a smaller value initially five hundred twelve. Right, so this is to reduce actually the computation cost as a start. Now what we can do is we can um, um, we can define actually define. Uh, we can go to your report here. And do a surface average and click temperatures. Temperatures. 
and select this one to be the outlet of your of your pipes. So this function is going to going to um, actually compute the temperature of the outlet. Okay, and you can also monitor, uh, create, more and plot. Okay, so this uh, will plot the temperature at the outlets versus the iterations. So we can see here also the solver created. Uh, actually created the uh, the monitoring plot for all the governing equations that we're going to solve for quantity, for energy, um, as well as the x, x, y, z momentum. Now, if you wish to to uh, to visualize how the how the temperatures gonna look like inside the domain we can do these derived uh, derived parts and create a plan right so we can create a plan exactly in the middle uh, they, they cut through the middle of your of your domain combination of the domain okay right so this creates a plan and we can go to scene and create a new scalar And uh, click derive, click plan sections. Functions we will select it to be temperatures. Okay. So here we are able to see uh, temperatures. So say we initialize the solutions. So you will initialize the solutions. Uh, we have we initialize we have the initial temperature of 300 okay so it's it's 300 everywhere inside this inside the simulations so here we can see temperatures uh, right at the uh, at the cross sections of your domain obviously there are other way of uh, visualizing the temperature as well such as looking at the absorber plate so we can go to, we can create a new scalar scene here and select uh, Okay, and select your absorber plate Right, and, uh, and select temperatures for the functions So you can save your simulations and run. So, so the very first thing that the solver is um, the very first thing that the solver will begin with is actually calculating the view factors. So this is the view factors for the surface to surface radiations. Um, so you're calculating these uh, view factors uh, uh, from your patch. So this patch is the, um, the your boundaries, okay? The the mesh on your boundaries. So the more mesh that you have, the more patch is going to be. So the longer the calculation is actually going to take. So each time you change some configurations, maybe in your emissivities, maybe in your solar load, uh, um, you're expecting the solver to actually need to recalculate these, uh, these, uh, these few vectors. So if you run your uh, 
your simulations if you let the solver to to run until sufficient amount of iteration you can observe that the residual uh, of each of the gamma equations uh, reduces so in this case uh, we we um, we we do not have a lot of flaws so we can see the continuity and momentum equations actually uh, uh, drop much faster than your energies so this is your energy equations that describes actually this is this is this is uh, important for for the temperatures inside your domain so we can see here the energy the residual from the energy equations actually uh, takes much much more iterations to 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 drops okay so um so if you simulate this long enough until the uh, the residual uh, decreases you can so you can you can uh, you can see um the you, the, the temperature of of your water say the outlets actually um, also steady out okay so this is you can see its value steady out to find a value of uh, three three hundred three hundred and thirteen so we can visualize the the temperatures so this is the temperature distributions um, inside your uh, in, in the in the cross-sectional areas of the domain, we can see here uh, the the high temperatures uh, of your insulators as well as your plates. Okay, and we can see um, away from the plates. Actually, we we have a lower temperature inside your air and also your waters. So this is your uh, this is the temperature plot of your isopa plates. Okay, so we can see this is the the water inlet. So initially uh, there's a, a high, there's a very low water temperatures. So as the water is absorbing heat from the isopa plates as well as uh, uh, from the air. From the solar radiation, so you can see the the temperature of the water gradually increase uh, over the length. So, so we overall we we see an, an increase a 13, 13 degree increase. So this is uh, this is in fact is is higher than than the experimental results. Obviously, we will expect some differences due to some assumption that we make. For example, we do not model the glasses, so uh, we, we assume the glasses to have full trans transmits transmittivities. All the radiations uh, will transmit uh, uh, through the glass, fully transmit through the glass. So obviously, that is not true as well. We also assume that your the surface temperature at the top. Uh, we also assume that the surface temperatures are at the top here to be a fixed three hundred. Okay, that is also unlikely to be true. Uh, the glasses here uh, in real life will gather some heat. Okay, you will have a temperature other than three hundred. So that would be all uh, for uh, there, there will be all for this for for this setup or this simulations of this uh, solar uh, uh, solar flat plate collectors. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I see you next time. See you. Bye bye.